this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Focused on discipleship. And it's a radical discipleship. The word radical comes from the Latin word radix, meaning root. So someone who is a radical transformer of society does not just focus on what is external. Poverty, for instance, is not the real problem. There are root problems regarding poverty. And this call to discipleship is radical because it allows us to go to the very root of our security, to the very sources of our sec security. And it is also radical because it is a call for everyone, not just for prophets, not just for priests and bishops and religious. It is a call for everyone, for every baptized. If we listen to the conditions of discipleship, give us the impression that God is very contra vida. It seems that God does not want us to enjoy life. We are living, we are invited to live a joyless life. Discipleship is really radical because discipleship is teaching us that there is nothing and no one in this world that can be our real source of security and deepest fulfillment in life. In the first reading, Elijah called Elisha to be a prophet. And Elisha wanted to say goodbye to his family. But Elijah said, No, you have to leave everything. And what Elisha did was to take the yoke of oxen, to slaughter all of them. And he used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. This is a very graphic and dramatic way of presenting about radical disciples. setting aside everything and focusing oneself to just one important thing that really matters to serve God as a prophet. And then in the gospel, three persons promise to follow the Lord, but with conditions. But let me say goodbye to my family first. Let me bury my father first. Many times our sources are coming from relationships, especially from significant people in our lives. And also from our comfort zones, from our possessions in life. Discipleship is very radical because Jesus is telling us one very important lesson in life that we cannot make people and our
our possessions to be our sources of security because one day they will be taken away from us. Sometimes parents look at their children as their sources of security. They look at their children as investments, as projects, as fulfillment of their dreams. Sometimes they were not able to finish a course and they ask one of their children to finish it for them. It's not a problem if the child, the, your son or your daughter, sense that this is his or her call for him or for her. No problem with that. But to force someone to finish an unfinished agenda that I have, is not service, is not love. That is why they may be able to finish this course, their course, but they will not be working in line with their course. They will not be happy in their lives. Sometimes we look at our children as trophies and medals that we are only very proud of them and supported of them when they receive trophies and medals. But there are many times that they will frustrate our expectations. And if we anchor our security and our joy and happiness on this phase, we will be frustrated and we will lose hope and we will lose the meaning, the sense of meaning in life. At times, our security is coming from power. What if I will be defeated during the election? What will happen to my life? What if I fail? If my source of security are my significant others, my loved ones. We know already that COVID-19 taught us that. Many of our loved ones died and we were not even able to say goodbye. Sometimes our sources of security are coming from our possessions. How many businesses collapsed at the height of the pandemic? That's why those people who use their business, their livelihood as the source of security committed suicide because there is no more point of living Jesus' call for discipleship is so radical because he is telling us not to be attached to anyone inordinately attached to something or to someone because one day they will be taken away from us. And when everything is taken away from us, there is still someone we can hold on to, and that is Jesus. Many people, I think many of us who are gathered here, have been through a lot of crises and problems in life. At times we are confused. At times we wanted to give up life, to give up hope. But because of our faith in Jesus, because Jesus is with us, we can still find meaning in life, even with the death of our loved ones. We can still continue to love them eternally. And our initial goodbye is actually an entry point of an eternal hello. Because we believe that after this life, 
there is something that the Lord prepares for all of us. And then, once we love, not because of what we can get, once our love, our hearts become free, this is what St. Paul is talking about, the first reading. When our hearts become free, meaning not attached to people and things, that when we do something good, it is not because we want people to respond to our love. When we love, we don't expect people to love is to love us in return. Good if they love us back, but if they do not love us, it will not make our life miserable. Because a free heart, a free heart is able to love sincerely. It is when our love is free from inordinate attachments that we can truly love, we can truly serve. Gob Ike and Congressman Momo are here. I attended the SOPA last Sunday. I am so happy with what they said. During the campaign, we are hopeful. But after the election, we are governors and congressmen for Surigao del Sur. even to the people who did not vote for you. That is radical discipleship. And Jesus is the embodiment of that. He was heading towards Jerusalem and people would not accept him because if they will accept him, they will follow what he will do in Jerusalem to die and to offer himself even to the people who would betray him. Jesus was not attached to friendship, to power. He was the most helpless person facing hero, facing Fire. In a way, he was very vulnerable. But on the other hand, he is the bravest person in front of Pilate and Hero. Because a person who is not afraid to die is the person who is most free in his life. When nothing enslaves us, we become free in loving. You know, I heard many people, Bishop, we are really praying for you that God will grant you the miracle that you will be healed from your cancer. And I told them, thank you very much for your prayers. That is one miracle that God can possibly grant me. But I also told them, but I will assure you that even if God will not cure me from my cancer, I will still continue to love and serve this God. It is a miracle to be healed from cancer, from illness. But it is also a great miracle for a man to continue believing and loving the Lord, even if it is not healed. 
that is also a miracle when the things that we ask from the Lord are not given to us we still continue to believe and trust in the goodness of God because once an illness is loved without conditions that illness becomes a powerful tool for people to be drawn to God when our hearts are so free we can love without conditions we can serve without being selective and that is why discipleship of Jesus is very radical because once our hearts are free it is only then that parents can truly love their children whatever happens it is only then that couples can love each other whatever happens it is only then that public officials can serve the constituents better irrespective of who these people are when the heart is free it can serve and love to the maximum and this is the source of real joy and security only in Jesus always Jesus and nothing else